So today we're going to look at automating configuration testing using the HP IMC Compliance Center. So this is part of the base platform. So if you if you bought it, you got it, basically. Why? Um, well, PCI DSS 3.0. So that was released in November of 2013, and we're uh, quickly coming up on the date where this has to be in place. Compliance puts a lot of burden on operational staffs, and um, being able to automate this uh, really helps with that. Right, um, and accuracy matters. So you want to make sure that uh, the whole point of, of these compliance initiatives, like COBIT, like PCI DSS, these kind of things, um, you they're there so we can be secure. So we want to actually make sure that the, the policies that we're writing are actually adhered to. And honestly, human beings, we kind of suck at repetitive tasks. So if you can automate this away and get a tool to do this for you, that'll give you back precious time in your day to do other things. Let's take a look. So here we are on the IMC homepage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go up and click on the service button to get us over to the compliance center. So you can see here, there's actually a few different ways you could get in here. You could go service, drop down menu, you could click on the service at the top level menu, go directly there. Or if you're over on the left, you can get in here too. So it's kind of as, as really as you want. Lots of different ways to get in. So we're going to first look at the compliance policies. So we've got uh, a bunch of out-of-the-box policies that are written, and of course you can extend these and, and create and make your own. And one of the ones we're going to go look at here is the PCI DSS, so it's the PCI Payment Card Industry. So this is definitely not going to be all-inclusive. Um, there's no product, IMC included, that's ever going to be able to make you compliant. The PCI DSS, if you actually go and read what the policy says, there's a lot of things that are process-based. Um, you know, And depending on what vendor that you're running, you're, you're going to have to look at different rule sets and make sure that these rules actually do help you meet those compliance initiatives. Right? So that's something very important. Is don't just trust that IMC or... or really any other product is going to make you PCI compliant. Make sure you look in these, um, work with your auditors, work with your compliance folks, and make sure that you know what you're doing, right? So if you look here for this particular one, we've got for Cisco devices, the console user interface login authentication. And you can see here that this rule, this pre-populated -pre rule, will apply to all these different device series. And we'll look in for that login um, right that that script or that particular piece of configuration that it appears in your device and we've got a, a bunch of other rules here so like I said you can add them um, you could delete these and take them out if you want it's really up to you so once you know that they're there we're going to go in and we're going to create a task so I've already got one that I've I've run here but let's add a new one just for fun All right so we'll click on the add button so the beautiful part about this is that you can run it once or you can schedule it. Um, it's actually quite flexible. So we'll put in the new task name here, PCI DSS 2. Uh, I don't want the NSA routing. Um, I just want PCI, right? So I am going to execute this task periodically. So you'll see here that in a second that we will suddenly be given a schedule. And now do we want to run it every day, every week, every month? So let's say, um, and again, read read through PCI DSS, read through whatever compliance that you have to see, you know, what, when do you, how often do you have to audit these things, right? It could be weekly, it could be monthly. Um, more often is usually better, but not always. You, you might not want to do every day. Um, so we'll do this every, every Saturday at uh, noon, and this will be PCI DSS Automated IT Control Objective Verification for Network Devices. So now the next thing we do is we can actually select the devices we want to apply this to, or alternately, we can take the different approach and just say that any device model that matches um, what we're going to select here, we're going to apply this policy to those device models. So our pop-up window will come up here, and now we're going to be able to go in and we're going to be able to filter out. Um, so first we'll do this by vendor name. So I will scroll down here, and I'm uh, actually looking at some Cisco devices. So I've got some Cisco routers in here. I've got some 1800s and some 2800s. So I will first query for the 1800, and I'll grab all of those. And I will scroll down to the bottom of the window and click OK. So we'll verify that those popped up in the list there. Now we'll do Select Model again. And again, we could have... Uh, we could have done some different things with the filtering, but this is just for me. This is the fastest way to do this. So you know, do it as as you want. 
um, Cisco series 28. I'll hit query again. So again, we're going to make sure that this is the Cisco routers we want to look at. So there's a 2800s. Click OK. So now we're, I'm going to go through the list and just, it's always good, trust but verify, right? Go down through the list, look at the bottom, make sure that all those 2800s are in there that we want. Excellent. Um, now if we wanted to, we could filter devices as well, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to click OK and I want to say anytime that there's a Cisco 1800 or 28 on my network, I want to apply this policy. Um, I want to look um, for all of those, the violations of the policies that I've defined within that rule set. Right, so right now it is enabled and I will execute the first one here. So what this is doing right now is this will actually go and run all of those checks directly against the latest backed up configuration that is already in IMC. So the nice thing about this is that we don't actually have to put additional stress and strain on the network and on your network devices by going out and, and doing expect scripts and all that crazy stuff to actually look at, at the state. We assume that the latest backed up config is actually what it is right now. So that is something to be aware of. So we can go through here now that we've found these violations and click on the warning report. So we've got the tax, task execution results, right? We can see how many violations were in place, um, you know, who was, who was violating, what was the level of violation, all that kind of stuff. The other nice thing we have here is we have the ability to go into the history and we can look at the um, compliance policy or we can actually look at from a device standpoint. And this will actually show us for that specific device what rules were violated on a device so the nice thing is is we've given you all the information to be able to go now and and do your cleanup work right um, once your devices are in that good known secure state where you have no violations from that point forward what IMC will continuously do is we'll recheck those devices to make sure that nothing changed right there is definitely the fix button here as well so we have the ability to um, within those compliance centers uh, rules we have the ability to put in what the fix should be when a given violation has happened um, not everybody likes to do that uh, simply well from an automation standpoint because they don't trust it uh, I, I hope we'll get there one day but we're not yet um, so definitely you know you can kind of share that information and make sure that everybody has the latest access see you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial